Good evening everyone and welcome to the Rectory and Stations of the Cross. Stations of the Cross are about snapshots. The snapshots taken of the time when Jesus was tried and sentenced on the day that we call Good Friday, um, right up until his death and burial uh, that same afternoon. It was a very quick day. Lots happened in a short space of time. But stations act in slow motion, where we take stills, if you like, and to consider what happened to find comfort, some insight and some guidance for us. Our purpose over the next three days is to explore what Jesus went through and the people he met, that in his difficulties and what he suffered, that as people we can find out that Jesus takes our sufferings seriously and can be found very near us, in front of us or alongside us. And in this we find consolation, a comfort that is true, that is deep, and courage that no matter how weak that might feel, nevertheless helps us to move on in hope. Now Mark is going to lead us through these times and uh, what will happen is that I will see the, the stations, there'll be three of them, and uh, there'll be, we'll, we'll look at the paintings, we'll listen to a scriptural reading, and then we'll have a reflection on that, a short reflection, and we'll end uh, with the Lord's Prayer and a blessing. So I'm going to hand over to Mark, and, uh, and let's begin. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. A reading from John's Gospel. Jesus said to Pilate, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If it belonged to this world, my servants would fight. But my kingdom is from another place. Pilate said, so you are a king? Jesus answered, You are the one saying, I am a king. This is why I was born and came into the world, to tell people the truth. Pilate said, What is truth? The question arises, Does the truth really exist? What is the truth? Can we know it? Can we find it? Here springs to mind the question of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. When Jesus reveals to him the deep meaning of his mission, what is truth? Pilate cannot understand that truth is standing right in front of him. The truth is not grasped as a thing. The truth is encountered. It is not a possession, it is an encounter with a person, the person of Jesus. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. A further reading from John's Gospel. It was about noon on preparation day of the Passover. Pilate said to the people, Here is your king. They shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Do you want me to crucify your king? The leading priests answered, The only king we have is Caesar. So Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers took charge of Jesus. 
Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out to a place called the Place of the Skull. The cross is how God has responded to suffering in the world. Sometimes it may seem as though God does not react to suffering, as if he is silent. And yet God has spoken, and he has replied, and his answer is the cross of Christ, which is love. Let us remember this, God loves us. God never condemns, he only loves and saves. The word of the cross is also the answer which Christians offer in the face of suffering, the suffering that continues to work in us and around us. Christians must respond to suffering with good, taking the cross upon themselves as Jesus did. The third station, Jesus falls under the weight of the cross. A reading from Isaiah. Who would have believed what we heard? Who saw the Lord's power in this? He grew up like a small plant before the Lord, like a root growing in a dry land. He had no special beauty or form to make us notice him. There was nothing in his appearance to make us desire him. He was hated and rejected by people. He had much pain and suffering. People would not even look on him. He was hated and we didn't even notice him. But he took our suffering on him and felt our pain for us. So let us pray, gather our thoughts, our reflections together, and let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will, will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now a blessing for all of you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and give you his peace, now and forever. Amen. May you have a safe and perfect night. Amen.